Guys, on the previous video we talked about target suction pressure. Now we're going to be talking about target head pressure. And we're going to split this category up into three different sections of different sear ratings. Now I have my gauge right here and I'll give you a, a big gauge on the screen there to follow along with. But there's three groups we're going to fit them into. Older machines that are 10, 8 sear in that area. Uh, you can even lump a few 12s in there. But typically 12s might be a little bit more efficient than the ones we're talking about. We're going to go with that older group. We're going to go with a more modern group, which is 13 sear, 14 sear, 15 sear in that area. And then we'll go high efficiency, which you know has our 16s and 18 sear units in it. And we're all going to separate those the same way we did our suction pressures. Delta T's from the ambient. Now, on suction pressure, we did, we took our temperature at our return, our dry bowl, and we would subtract a certain number, whether it be 35 or 30, to get our target suction pressure at that saturation point. We're going to do the opposite here. We're going to take our ambient outside and we're going to go at 80 degrees. That's how we're going to, we're just going to use 80 as an example. And we're going to add three different delta T's to it depending on our sear. Now follow along here. We're going to start with the older machines. If we have 10 and 8 sear machines, typically their pressures are going to have a condensing temperature. You know, our condensing temperatures, well, how we measure subcooling, we take how many degrees are below that saturation point, and then we have our subcool. So we're going to take our outdoor ambient, let's say it's 80, we're going to add 25 to 30 for these older machines. Let's see what that means. Well, I've got my gauge right here. 25 to 30 over 80 degrees is 105 to 110. And we look on our gauge, we have our you know, saturation points there in the green for our R22, which is what we're going to use. We have at 105, we're right around 210 PSI. Now if we push it up to 110, which is 30 degrees over ambient, we're right around 225. So you can guess if you have one of them older machines on an 80 degree day, you should be running between 210 and 225 PSI. Now let's look at more modern machines like 13, 14, 15 sear machines. They're going to run around 20 degrees. So we're going to go down a little bit lower in that PSI region, a little bit more efficient. Coils are a little bit bigger, that's how we achieve that. So if we're 20 degrees over, we're at 100 degree saturation, and we're just below 200, about 195 or so. So 195, see we went down 15 PSI with that more modern machine, that 13 sear, 14 sear, 15 sear machine. So it makes a pretty big difference. What happens when we step it up to 16 to 18 sear, real high efficiency machines? We might go down all the way to 15 degrees above ambient. So we have 80 degrees and we go up to 95. Now we're down there into 180 to 185 range. So just think about it. We had 225 for the older machines for their running pressures, head pressures, on an 80 degree day. And now we've gone all the way down to around 185 on a more modern, high efficiency machine. You can see what the big difference is when you step it up with those larger coils. But what happens on a really hot day with one of the older machines? That'd be a good question. So let's say it's 100 degrees outside. And then we have an older machine that's running 30 degrees above ambient. Let's say it's 8 sear. And then that puts us at 130. And at 130, we are right below 300 PSI. So that's a normal operating pressure at that temperature. So you can see how you come up to an older machine and think there's an issue with it when it's actually running at the proper pressure on the head pressure side. But let's say it's an 18 sear instead. So we have 100 degrees and we're going to 115 though for an 18 sear. And at 115, we're down there near 240, 245. It's so almost 60 PSI, 56 PSI difference between those two machines. So it makes a huge difference with high efficiency machines. And what does that mean? Doesn't work the compressor as hard, doesn't pull as many amps, doesn't use as much electricity. That's a draw high efficiency machines but now when you go out to the field you'll be able to say well I can look for a particular temperature above ambient for my saturation point for 10 and 8 sear it's think 25 to 30 degrees above ambient for our saturation point for 13 14 15 sear think about 20 degrees now if you want to you know say hey it's 12 sear I'll just use 22 or 23 you could probably get pretty close there just kind of middle ground I've done that a couple times but then you step it down to 16 to 18 sear and you're all the way down to 15 degrees above ambient which gives you a much lower head pressure. So you can see how on a 100 degree day if you walk up to an 18 sear machine you're going to treat it a lot differently as far
far as head pressure than you would with an old 8 or 10 sear machine. So I hope you guys got something good out of this. We'll do more videos like this. But now we've done target suction pressure and target head pressure. And you should be able to see in the field how those affect how you treat a machine, whether you think it's dirty or not, whether you think it's having an issue as far as a restriction. So hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one.